Ciao. Welcome, golf fans, pursuers of knowledge and the almighty dollar. This is your golf guru bringing you the 2022 RBC Heritage. This is my Before the Lock show where I will cover ownership projections, whether my top value plays below 7K. Yep, we're going to sift through the bottom, get you the best guys to play if you are trying to jam up the top. And with that said, let's jump into this and talk a little golf. Okay, so real quick, if you have been looking through the DFS, DraftKings, whoever, and uh, stumble upon a name of Morgan Hoffman, that is not Charlie Hoffman's kid, or uh, don't get him mixed up, two different individuals, and by the way, you do not want to play Charlie Hoffman, he is a mess, but I just want to introduce you to Morgan Hoffman if you've never heard of him, and just give you a little bit of information. So, of course, Morgan Hoffman, if you don't know, uh, played at Oklahoma State back like 2010. I think he crossed. I think Ricky Fowler um, came on tour, what, 2009? So I think they might have had played together. I know they're friends. But he had a press release, which is the reason why I'm talking about it. It brought back to my attention. I saw his name, but this guy has been kind of out of sight, out of mind since I think his last term was 2019 at the Shriners. Long story short, back in 2017, he was diagnosed with uh, MS, mus muscular dystrophy. And uh, his last tournament, as mentioned, was Shriners 2019. And then he left a tour to try to go figure out how to, you know, get better. Uh, I think he lives in Costa Rica, kind of went on this spiritual journey and trying all kinds of holistic medicine and drugs. As when I say drugs, like uh, psychedelics, you name it. And supposedly he's uh, feeling better. Um, I guess he was going to try to make it back for the Honda, which he had, as you can see over here to the right, had his best finish way back in 2017, but I guess had a spill on his motorcycle, which threw him back. Um, but anyways, I wanted to give you guys a little information about this guy. I'm not saying to play him. I think he's like bare min price at 6,000. I guess he's played a ton at this course. I don't know if he stated that, um, I don't think, I think he was in New Jersey, but he mentioned he played this course quite a bit as a youth or younger um you can see i believe yeah rbc heritage back in 2015 he had a ninth and kind of funny enough i mean if you look at and this is really old data um you know he does have some comparable courses that make sense but i mean this guy's been out of golf so he's got three medical exemptions left so he picked this one um he's you know because technically you've got to pick the ones that hopefully you get enough points or standings to you know keep your card of some sort um, or, you know, I guess he'll go back down to the corn ferry and try to qualify through there. But all this is, is to give you guys a little introduction. So when you see his name, as you are scrolling through and trying to make your picks, that is who Morgan Hoffman is. I do not, again, do not state to play him in DFS, but you know, if you want to take a crazy flyer, uh, he would definitely be someone to do it. And like I guess that does have quite a bit of past experience here and selected this tournament, um, as one that he thinks he could do, you know, at least maybe make the cut and get some points to keep his cart. All right, real quickly, again, because we're going to be going through my plays below 7K, I just want to tell you where I'm focusing at. We're going to be looking at a smaller model, but my focus from a stroke gain analysis, the skill set that I want to see, of course, guys that hit the fairways is a must at this course at Harbortown Golf Links. Approach is always typically very high up there and no different here, right? You're Trying to hit your drive to get you to the best angle to come into these very small greens. I think I've been stating the smallest on tour. That is not true. Of course, Pebble Beach is, uh, I think, averages 3,500 square feet. These greens are 3,700 square feet. So the second smallest greens that these guys play on tour. Uh, ball striking is up there. You're going to be hitting a lot of, uh, you know, kind of longer shots in if you're trying to reach some of these par fives. Uh, and then also you're going to be laying up. You're not going to be hitting driver on a lot of these holes. It forces you to you know, possibly hit a high iron or a hybrid or what it is. Around the green, a short game is definitely going to come into play because of how small these greens are. You're not going to be hitting them all. Scrambling because there is going to be times you're going to get a little wayward into the trees. Um, around the greens, you're going to need to scramble. Putting is always crucial. Uh, but because these greens are so small, a lot of your putts should be somewhere around 15, 20 feet and in. So, you know, allows like last year, Emiliano Grillo, uh, one of the worst putters ever on tour. Had a really good putting out, and I believe he ended up like second or third in the tournament, if I remember off the top of my head. Proxy of the pins, you can see here. Need to score on par fives as always. Manage the par fours. There's five, 400, or 450. And of course, 
you know, the year that, uh, oh, well, even Sink and then even um, Mr. Webb Simpson, you know, got to around 20 under. So they do need to score here. Now, depending on what the weather is going to do, we're going to talk about that. And right now the weather looks okay, but we'll go through it a little bit for you and let you know who to where to pull up on when finder. And I'll give you that information. All right. Lastly, uh, I did sift through these guys that are below or 7K and below uh, with the comparable courses that I share with you guys on the earlier two shows. Uh, I did a larger one, just like what I have here, and then I kind of focused on these. That gave me kind of a good understanding of the guys that I wanted to play, if I was going to play anyone below 7K. And, uh, and then I will show you what I did from there, of course, looking at recent form. But here's the comparable courses. I've already went through this quite a bit. You've got a list of guys here that have done well. And then I believe I ran another one. This second model here you see is just looking at these courses on the left. So Colonial, Seaside. Um, you've got La Quinta and even PGA West, which is the Nicholas course they play. And then of course, Wailea. Okay. Enough said, let's go jump over to fantasy national, do some quick, uh, quick analysis for you guys. Let you see some things and then I'll jump over and we'll uh, do ownership projections, weather, and then wrap this thing up. Okay. So I've jumped over into fantasy national. And again, I'm always looking at DraftKings pricing. That's what I use, but it doesn't mean you can't use these picks. Of course, across all platforms, Yahoo, FanDuel, whatever your choice is. And you're going to notice over here, I'm looking at the last 12 rounds. That's the last three tournaments these guys played. I mentioned I already went through two cycles. One was a larger comparable course to see who flushed out. Then I tightened it down and went with those courses, as I mentioned on the left, which was, oh, off the top of my head, right? Uh, you had the Amex, you had the RSM, you have the Sony Open, and, of course, Harbor Town where they're playing, and I forgot the other one. But it doesn't matter. You get the idea. With that said, right now there's no filters turned on. And uh, I've found 13 guys that I want to talk about. Of course, I'm picking the top five out of those 13 for you. And you can see here is kind of a minier model that we're looking at. Good drives, approach around the green, scrambling, putting. You can see over the last three tournaments or 12 rounds, how many birdies they've been making. So you want to, if possible, see this green or on the way up green. And then you get to see here the last five tournament results. And then, of course, how they've done at this tournament. And not because I am a Brian Stewart somewhat fan. I don't want to say I'm a big fan, but he's a Michigan local guy. I talk about him quite a bit. And his game set fits his course very well. And he did very well. Uh, I think he ended up, when I did the comparable courses, uh, he was ranked like, you know, three. Um, so that's that. And then this is looking at recent form. Uh, he's coming up ninth in this model here that I'm looking at. But it is highlighting a lot of what he does well. And he's also been playing pretty good golf. So long story short, you can see his recent results. He missed a cut at the Valero. Had a good showing at Corrales. Valspar, missed a cut the players, which I'm not too worried about. And then, of course, Puerto Rico. So overall, recent form, as you see, uh, is doing very well. And then also, he hasn't missed a cut here, at least since 2017. Uh, the best showing 2019 and 2021. And if I click on Mr. Brian Stewart, uh, you can see driving accuracy is crazy, uh, over 70%. Of course, he doesn't hit it very far, but on this course, that is not a problem at all as long as you are accurate and can aim your golf ball you can see over his last 12 months he gains on bermuda and poa and the big thing to look at here is what has he been doing well so the irons have been clicking so gaining strokes on his i don't know last we'll say corrals he had to i don't have the numbers but i'd say last four out of five he's gained with the irons and the putter uh which you can see can be on and off but over his last 12 months typically gains and if we look at the comparables, um, he doesn't even win on tour back when the Zurich was an individual event, not a team event. Then he got Mayakoba, Mayakoba, uh, the Fortinet, which used to be the Safeway, the Sony in 2018. If I look at more recent stuff, let me see here. 2019, I think that's the first year of the Rocket Mortgage. So his best finish recently, which was uh, this past summer, uh, was at the 3M Open TPC Twin Cities, which was in my earlier comparable courses. And the reason why is the course that they're playing at Harbortown has 18 holes that come into play for water. And at TPC Twin Cities, 17 holes come to play in water. So you have to be very accurate. Um, different green type. I believe that's bent greens or TPC Twin Cities. But if you kind of scroll through, you're going to see the Sony, John Deere, the Sony, the Honda, that's the most, well, I take that back. That's one of his better finishes. Uh, that was just a, well, about a month and a half ago or so. RSM, the Amex. Some of this is older, 
but you can start to see a pattern that this is a really good fit for him if he's going to do well and he's under good recent form. So with all that said, at 6,700 projected ownership, around 6%, um, I, it's a play for me and uh, should make my top five. We'll see when I get out of here. All right, Lukey Donald. Um, I've been picking this guy because he's been cheap. He's actually up a couple hundred bucks comparative. He's been around Bear Man or 61 over the past four or five tournaments. Um, you can see, you know, recent form is is a mixed bag, but he got you, uh, I'm sorry, that's recent uh, course history. Recent form, he's made the last two cuts at the Valero and the Valspar, but missed some cuts there. Um, when you look at Luke Donald, and uh, probably, don't, you know, this is going to be older stuff, but of course he at one time was ranked number one without, I don't think at that time, a major win, I think is what they had state, but he was a really good putter, really good with the irons. Um, and then it's crazy if you look at where his comp, comp courses, but again, a lot of this is old, but look at the RBC, a runner-up in 2016, a runner-up in 2014. Um, he even had another one, was it? Yeah, runner-up in 2017. And then the Heritage, when it wasn't called the RBC, but the Heritage 2011. Of course, the Sony RBC, again, I mean, he loves the RBC. So when we think of Webb Simpson and Kuchar, He's another one. And even Stuart Sink has won there three times. Now, Stuart Sink's not being mentioned by me or anybody really else, even though he's won the, you know, recently. He's your past champion. Plus, he had two prior wins way back. Um, but his game just hasn't been anywhere near the form we were used to. So I think that's why a lot of guys are kind of fading him. But I wanted to bring him to your attention, uh, Mr. Lukey Donald, because like I said, I've been kind of recommending him here and there, spot plays. And like I said, we just look at, you know, the Sony. Pebble Beach, so really small greens. Uh, you know, you don't need to be long to be able to score there. Same with the Sony. The Valspar and the Valero, tougher tracks, but the Valspar is not a bad comparable. Um, you can see he really gained with the irons. So he's been firing, and that's what I wanted to show you. His uh, last three out of four terms, we can't see Puerto Rico. But at the Honda, he even gained four strokes with the iron. Just struggled a little bit off the tee. And with the putter, he's never going to, if you go with the off the tee stroke gain statistic, because he hits it, so short what is the average 284 um you know they combine distance with hitting fairways well that's going to hurt him uh, every time i mean the last time he's gained it was at the rsm way back in 2020 of november so uh but like i said it's a different stat than good drives and that's why we're looking at good drives but anyways i think you could play luke donald at 6300 and he will get you through the weekend and that's the expectations for him we're a brian stewart you know, he could top 20. Um, it is very possible. All right, the next guy also that I talk quite a bit about uh, on this show is Nate Lashley. Again, a, a bit of it was because I was there when he had his win at uh, the Rocket Mortgage. And of course, what was a Monday qualifier, um, if I remember correct, how he got in there. I might be wrong. I mean, that I might be confusing the Corey Connors. But he, he got in either he was like third alternate or something like that. It was kind of a quinky deek, a little bit like when Corey Connors won Valero. And so it was kind of exciting that, uh, and even Doc Redman, and of course that was a really, a lot weaker field if you want to state, but he's been playing some really good golf. Um, you can see ranked 18th in my model. Uh, the putter is what will hold him up, but he did have a pretty good run on Bermuda uh, not too long ago. We'll look at that. You see the birdies are kind of slowly moving up there, but he had an 18th at Valero, right? Tough track, Corrales, he had a 15th, Valspar, another tough track uh, at Florida T27 and in Puerto Rico. He's only played here once, but he missed the cut back in 2020, so that had been two years ago. And if we click on Mr. Nate Lashley, you see pretty accurate, over 60%. Uh, drives the ball around 294, so a little pop uh, comparative to some of these guys. You can see over his, well, I always say career, but over his last 12 months, uh, he's gained on Bermuda, gains on POA. And if you remember correctly, if you guys uh, remember the AT&T Pro-Am two years ago, we see here that would be right here in 2021 20, um small greens right the small screens on tour and he gained four over four strokes with a putter that is poa but i've just there could be some correlation right because again i go back to worse putters on tinier greens and not a lot of undulation on these greens there's of course there's break and some slope and whatnot but nowhere near of course like what we saw at the masters but they're not super slopey greens they're not difficult greens uh and you should be closer to the pen Anyways, um, you can see Greenbrier had a good finish. That's, you know, that that tournament is no longer in the rotation. It was removed during the COVID thing and just never came back. 
but that's played uh, at TPC Old Whitehead. I mentioned that's a little bit what got me on uh, Joaquin Neiman. If you know that course, it's a very similar tree lined, old school. Um, you know, I'll click on it real fast for you. You're not going to see a ton, but you can see less than 7,200 yards and a par 70. You know, those were bent greens. Anyways, I like Nate Lashley. Um, I definitely going to be, you know, playing him and I will be recommending him. Um, I pulled up Seb Strzok and I know he's over the price tag of 7,000, but I wanted to mention him because I did not mention him in my yesterday's show. And what really kind of shocked me was Seb. Uh, we all know, of course, he had the one at the Honda. Pretty good recent form. You know, he's made the cut here twice. But if we click on Seb, what I what I did not know was going on is that he's been gaining. I mean, if you look over his last five tournaments played, he's been gaining over three strokes with a putter. That's that's crazy. Um, and you can see it here. So at the players, he gained six. Arnold Palmer, he gained, again, this is all Bermuda, 2.2. Gained six at Honda, of course, where he won. Genesis is POA. Um, and then the Amex also, always forget, nope, doesn't even show La Quinta. I believe that's Bermuda, but it is that mixed course. So don't quote me. Um, I need to figure that out. I always forget what they have there because I believe that is played over on the West Coast. So long story short, all I'm saying is don't look, overlook Seb Straka. Um, he's playing pretty good golf, and you can see projected ownership's a little bit higher. Uh, but from recent form, you can see, again, the putting's great scrambling. And typically, let me go look, he's he's almost 60% off the tee accurate. He's got a little more distance in the bat. Um, but yeah, someone that you might want to look at. And I just, that's all it was. Again, this show is supposed to be more focused. I mean, again, he's off by $200. But because of that, I wanted to bring him up. All right. Cameron Tringali, right? Um, this guy's fallen a bit out of love. Uh, of course, his form has not been the best. But I think it's a good value at 7000 And we need to look at Cameron Tringali also. Keep in mind that Cameron Tringali has still not won on tour. I think out of all the players, he's either got, what, the most earnings or wins, or I'm sorry, the most earnings on the PGA Tour without a win at this time. I think it's something like that out there. But you can see uh, it's not the driver that's causing the issues or even the irons. It's been the putter. And typically, he can be a pretty decent putter and get pretty hot. So let's go look at some stuff with Cameron Tringali, right? So... You can see here, recent form, not good. I mean, it's, you know, the Genesis at the Rivia at a T13. Um, he's played here three times now. Remember, though, this is way back in 2015 where Tringali, his game wasn't where it is today or where it's been the last couple of years. We'll put it that way. Um, let's go click on him real quick. All right. So typically drives the ball pretty accurate. 60% of the time he's hitting fairways. Get hit at about 300 yards. You can see typically, as I mentioned, pretty good putter. Now, if you look at the splits, Bermuda would be his worst, uh, but still positive. And you can see the irons typically are good. Um, the putter over the last 10 tournaments is what's kind of fallen off. And you can really see it here over the last four. Now, you got to remember, though, this is what I wanted to talk about, is not that long ago that this guy, we were paying, and depending on the field, we were paying some hefty money to play a Tringali. Um, he was third at the Farmers, seventh at the Houston Open, second at the Zozo, which is kind of like a WGC, right? You've got the, pretty much the best 80 players playing in the Zozo. 11th at Sanderson Farms. Had a pretty decent uh, little FedEx Cup run there. A third at Valspar. So we look at, let's look at some comparables with him and try to pick some things. So I guess his best finish, as I mentioned, was a Zozo back in October. And RSM in 2020 had a third. There's the 3M Open. He had a third. There's Greenbrier way long time ago, so don't worry about that. The Rocket, weak field. And you could make some argument. That's an old school, just straight back and forth course. There's a Houston. I'm just trying to see here. Let's go look at this a different way and look at when he was actually putting well. Um, and when, when was that? All right. So last time he gained significant strokes was at the Memorial back in June of 21. That would have been uh, when Rom kind of got hosed and... Of course, uh, Morikawa and Cantlay went to the playoff. Where else did he have some good putting in the Memorial? That is Bermuda, right? No, Bent. Okay, so he said the Memorial. Let's see. I'm, I'm trying to look also at dates. Okay, the Valspar. All right, so the one we want to look at the best he's had on Bermuda uh, was back in, you know, early May a year ago. So it's been a while. But like I said, for 7000 I like Cameron Tringali. You also got the narrative of all of the, the first-time winners this year. Why not? 
Um, at 7,000, if you're looking to plug a guy in, I'm going to give it a go. You guys got to make your own decision. But for his talent level against the rest of these guys at the 7,000 range, I think he's a better golfer. I've had this argument or made this case back with Munoz when he got priced down. And he showed it that Tita Green, um, better golfer. It's just whatever happens with the putter. I throw Cameron Trigali right into that bucket. All right, Mr. Bryce Garnett, I just bring him up. You know, not a bad recent form. I mean, he's making cuts. Best showing was a Puerto Rico. You can see he's made the last five times he's played here. He's made the cut four out of the five. He had a T-17 and a T-11. Again, like a Stewart, he's built like him, and they look a lot of like yours. You got the Ryan Moores and the Stewarts and the Garnets and the Armors and the, even Harmon. You can go like all those smaller dudes. Um, they all kind of fit like this kind of track, right? But you can see over the last uh, three tournaments, the driver has been a little wayward, but everything else has been firing good. So I'm just mentioning, and we'll go click on Garnett for you. Um, you can see he drives the ball typically very accurate. So that's kind of interesting that uh, that was a problem. But typically hits at 290, so almost 70% accurate, not a terrible putter. You can see the putter is typically pretty good. It's the irons. So that's what I would think would be more of the hiccup. Um, you can see the last two, he's gained a little bit with the driver. But again, remember, distance, I think that's done with the fairways. Trying to see, let's look at some uh, correlation. So his last, his only win was at Corrales quite a while ago. Travelers, though, pretty good comparable course. Wyndham from a distance perspective. There's the Honda, not too long ago, the 3M. There's that RBC back in 2020. So if he's going to have, we'll call it a spike week for Bryce Garnett, right? I think I already bet him. Um, it was one of the, you know, I just went through very early on, looked at all the guys that I know that could have that out of nowhere, great week with the putter and everything else, you know, kind of aligns in this course. This is one of the courses that they can excel at. Hence, Bryce Garnett. All right. I bring him Hendrick, Hendrick Stinson. Purely, it seems like, you know, just totally pulling this as a narrative that since he got announced as the Ryder Cup captain for Europe, um, that he's been playing a little better golf. Now the putter is a disaster still, which is crazy because when Henrik won, you know, some of his majors and tournaments, he was actually a really good putter. And of course he had the magical three wood that he had forever hit every fairway. I mean, it was one of the better ball strikers on tour a few years ago, but you know, that 18th, uh, T18 at Valero, a T57 at Valspar, you know, he withdrew from the players. I mean, he was, I think, too far out of it. It was like, forget it. The weather blows. I'm out of here. Funny enough, though, back when he did play this better, I mean, I have to go look. But, I mean, in my mind, he would have better form back in 2012 than he has recently. He missed a cut here. But you can see recent form um, not doing too bad. I mean, it's someone you could consider. And if uh, I feel like, you know, he's trying, maybe dedicated himself a little more to the game recently and is playing some of these. I mean, typically Ryder Cup captains, right? Want to play in more events. If you remember Stricker doing it or Padre Harrington, um, just to kind of play with their fellow, you know, guys that they're evaluating and whatnot. So I don't know, we'll see, see how he does. You know, he's not going to make my top five, but I wanted to at least give him an honorable mention. All right, CT Pan, of course, past winner, out dueled at the time. It was like DJ Kucher, Lowry, Probably forgetting a couple other guys that were up there the year he won it back in 2019. Um, you know, not a bad tournament history. Yes, he missed a cut recently, had a T52 after that. But if you look at recent form, he's hitting fairways, pretty good with the irons, good around the green. It's been the putter has caused the issues, still making some birdies. Let's go click on Mr. CT Pan. You can see distance a little under 300, a little over 60%. As I mentioned, the putter. So, of course, he just went in Fuego. We'll go look at that and how many strokes he gained with the putter when uh, he won it here. Um, but he's had some decent showings, right? He had that uh, ninth at the Genesis. Of course, at the Riv, tough course. Uh, pretty good showing at Sanderson Farms. Fortinet used to be the old Safeway. So, he's had some. Wells Fargo, a Quail, tough track. The Honda. Funny enough, I think I recommended him for the Masters. Let me see this. This is a couple years back. Yeah. So he was my differentiator. At one time, I thought it was Danny Lee. I sometimes get these guys confused. But it was actually C.T. Pan who really helped me out. And that's, of course, when Dustin Johnson won it in the fall 2020 Masters. But neither here or there. If you look at where he's had success, of course, he's won at RBC. Wyndham makes sense. Uh, but also on some tougher tracks, Charles Schwab at Colonial, RSM. 
Um, yeah, I think he's definitely a good play RSM. And uh, what I want to look at, yeah, gain six strokes with the putter. So that's kind of a, an anomaly. But you can see it happens. Let me see what his best ever. The Sanderson Farms gained seven in the Canadian Open. So it was his fifth best putting uh, outing ever when he won the RBC. So he's going to have to have some magic with that. But, I mean, we're not looking. When you're at 7,000, he gets you, I don't know, top 30. You're pretty happy. All right, Mr. Adam Svensson, um, I talked a bit about him, right? You know, can be very electric. Uh, it's, again, the putter, funny enough. that. It, but if you think about it, simpler greens, hopefully maybe he could have that good putting out. But he's had some really nice um, ball striking sessions. And, of course, he got his card back. Uh, I told you I used to like to play him a while ago, back in the days, I don't know, a few years ago on Showdown. But you can see, pretty accurate, got some distance. And if we go back, he had a good showing at the Honda. And then the Sony is where he really struck. And I think that's a really good comparable course at Wailea. You can see he actually gained strokes with the putter. Didn't do a whole lot off the tee, but great with the irons, good with the putter. This is what we need is these three quadrants. And, of course, hit fairways. But pull out your three iron. Like, you don't need to hit driver here or even a three wood. You could literally go down to a hybrid and manage this course, especially with his distance. So, what I'm saying is I think Adam Svensson uh, is a good play. Okay, so I'm uh, moving on to Jim Furyk. I'm, I'm bringing him up because somebody mentioned in the community about him. Uh, is he a good play or not? And you could flip a quarter, honestly. We'll, you know, this should fit him. Um, well, not should fit him. It's a perfect fit for Jim Furyk. But I'm a little worried where his game is at. Now, it wasn't that long ago, and I cannot remember the tournament, that he led either after first day or second day. So if one of you guys uh, in the community know, let me uh, ping me on that. But I do remember being a little shocked. But if you, I went and looked at his Champions Tour information, um, which we don't get here at Fantasy National, and he's been just average. His last three tournaments, he's been placing around in the 30s. Right now, I know he kind of came out a year ago there and, and kind of you know won a couple tournaments, maybe his first couple tournaments. But long story short, I'm not going to play him. Um, you know, and you can see projected ownership is not that great. But I'm not saying, I mean, it's really hard uh, not to think, well, Jim Fuhrer could do very well here. But what we have recently from him is a lot of miscuts. I mean, the Sony Open, which is a great comp course, hit a T42, had a, I mean, which is not a good comparable course. But it's kind of funny. There's some kind of interesting crossover at the Riviera with these guys. And I don't know if it's because, you know, how flat that course is. I'm not sure what it is. Um, but you can also see he hasn't had the greatest last three years here. I mean, well, last four years, he doesn't have a good history here, which, you know, let me go pull up uh, Jimmy boy. I want to see uh, what his best showing was at the RBC. Okay, so he does have a win here. It's way back in 2015. I was pretty sure that at some point this had to be like the best fit for this guy. So he had a first, a seventh, and eighth. I mean, way back. Um, but then you could see the last five years uh he's only made the cut once and nothing to write home about so like i said you could literally flip he could you know he could come out and top 20 this thing um or he could miss the cut and i'm leaning more he'll miss the cut uh what he's done over the last four or five years here what more of what he's doing on the champions tour now i look at it if you're on the champions tour and you're not top 10 or top 20 in the last few tournaments that tells me your recent form is not so good you're playing three days against not the best PGA, you know, not the best players in the world. So all that said, I want to just talk real quick about Furyk. He's out for me. So don't let, I'm not picking him here. I'm not telling you to play him. I'm telling you that it's a 50, 50. If he could go to make the cut and I'm going that he won't make the cut. All right. Now on to the other Ryder cup captain for the U S Zach Johnson. Um, perfect fit for him too, right? If, if this, right back into the Garnets and the Armors and the Moors is I throw Zach Johnson. Great with the wedges, typically a good putter. You know, he's got to hit some fairways, uh, typically pretty accurate. You can see over his last three, been accurate. Uh, I have seen him get wayward at times, which is a little odd, but it has happened. It's all about the irons, but the 100 yard, less than 100 yard, he's really deadly, kind of like a JT. Um, good showing at the Valero and a good showing at the Arnold Palmer. Everything else, not so hot. And you can see the last two years, he's missed a cut here. But before that, made the cut. Let's go look at Mr. Zach Johnson. 
Um, so you see a little bit over 60%, not amazing, but decent. But when you only hit at 285, that number should, as far as I'm considered, you kind of need it a little bit higher. Uh, but he again, makes up a bit with the putter and he had gained with the irons. And then you can see this long period where he was not doing very well with the irons, but good around the green, good putter. And of course, if you click on this, you're going to see that, you know, of course, he won an open. Uh, he's a major championship, also won a Masters. So a pretty good pedigree with the John Deere, Charles Schwab. That's a long time ago. A couple other John Deere's pop up, which I think is a great comp course. I haven't heard anybody else reference that course, but I think it's a great comp course. I know it's a different green type, but as in how that course plays and the size of the greens and how tight it is, uh, makes total sense to me. Loves the John Deere, the Amex. I'm trying to look at like more recent. Wyndham in 2020, the Honda in 21. That's kind of crazy. The US Open uh, back in 2020, RSM. That's not that recent. But I think he's a great fit for here. I am not a Zach Johnson fan. Um, I might have told the story before, but um, not me, but one of my buddies when I was on, playing way back on the Florida Sunshine Tours, the Maverick Tour, the Hooters. Uh, Zach was getting uh, also taught by the same teacher as my buddy and um, just was, you know, and I don't want to like, like I said, the guy seems like he does amazing work for PGA and I know he's very spiritual and the whole thing, but he was a bit of a jerk uh, when uh, me and my buddy met him and uh, maybe it was just the time that we caught him. So since that day, um, I'm not a fan of Zach Johnson, but that doesn't matter if I think he's a good play. I'm going to tell you guys, I'm going to play them. You should play them and uh, project our ownership less than 1%, which is kind of interesting. All right, let's move through the rest of these guys pretty quickly here. Kevin now should not be selected. He made my top 15, by the way. Okay, Bill Haas, been playing good golf. You can see recent form is pretty solid. He's been making cuts five in a row. Kind of a mixed bag in recent history, but 2020 at a T48, uh, T7. Uh, like I said, I think his game has been pretty solid. So I'm just giving him a, an honorable mention. If you're down here, I uh, would have no issues in playing him. Graham McDowell, uh, if I remember correctly, has won this tournament. Let me go verify that because I did not do that before. I am almost 100% correct. Yes, way back in 2013. Um, but again, fits right in that bucket, right? Smaller statue, very accurate, usually really good putter. Um, also showed up, remember, at the Arnold Palmer. A T50 at Corrales. Also kind of like, who was I just looking at here? It was it Zach Johnson? Missed the last couple cuts, but should be a good fit for him. And if you're down here, you can take a stab at him. Of course, Joel Damon, I would look at this as more of kind of a safe, if you want a really safe play at 6,800, you know, you can see ownership's up there. Uh, he withdrew from the Corrales. I still don't know what that was. Of course, uh, I think he was even, I think everybody was pissed off, right? Because that, that's where he won the previous year, his only win on tour. Um, I think I even bet him for that. Like I bet a few guys at the crowds. I think I threw a few bucks on him. Neither here or there. Uh, before that, you know, was making cuts, playing pretty decent golf. Typically does well putting on Bermuda. Well, I mean, that's usually the issues to putter. But I think he's going to be very uh, chalky from a 7K below. So if you want to kind of get away from that, go with some of these other guys that I'm talking about. Wes Bryant, I bring him up purely, of course, past winter in 2017. But has made the cut the last four times he's played here. So he's usually pretty good with the irons. You can get a little way with the tee, the putter, eh. But I just want to bring about 6,100. I think he's, an, uh, you know, maybe a high upside play technically. Um, even though, like I said, recent form. it Recent, recent form, not too bad. But before that, not the greatest. And then the last one, we'll go in a little more deeper. Of course, is my favorite, Blackbeard, Michael Thompson. I might be a little biased here because, of course, I've been betting this guy. And, again, we're back at a course that I think he could do very well or possibly win. And also he's got that really dope beard. I, I think it's just crazy um, that he went with that, but neither here or there. A uh, little bit better form, if you want to call it that. Uh, the Valspar and the players made the cut at both very tough uh, tracks. But he's had a really good course history here. As I already mentioned, this should fit him very well, a comfort course. You can see typically very accurate off the tee. Again, doesn't hit it very long. Bermuda is where he shines when it comes to putting. So that's a good thing. Um, and you can see that was part of it too. He's, you know, showing life with the putter, but everything else has not been fantastic by any stretch. Um, good showing at the Farmers, which is kind of crazy, right? That's not a course I would typically put him on. Probably a little bit uh, why I was peeking up. But the Sony, 
is a perfect course for him. Uh, and I think where I started jumping on the bandwagon was probably around Mayakoba, where I was betting him RSM. That was probably the one that maybe probably the saddest. I think that was the one I was all in that he was going to win. And then I probably got off him, and then he had a fifth at Sony. So the Amex should be a perfect fit for him. Let's click this. So, of course, he... I always mention this, uh, watch this tournament, the 3M team at TPC Twin Cities very closely, as when him and Wierenski were in that battle, so hence why they always, whenever we go to technical, uh, have to be very accurate tracks, that's why I think of those guys. Uh, also, of course, he won the Honda way back. Um, good showing at the Sony, I already mentioned, the Amex, the Sony again, RBC, the Amex, RBC, so, you know, Charles Schwab, I mean, you can see just he's going to do something he this is the course he's going to do it okay so let's talk ownership projections and actually while i was recording this just got notified by DraftKings that uh sebastian munoz has pulled out of the field which that's a bit of a bummer he was one of my picks was kind of excited so now i have to uh figure out somebody else to uh, make some changes with so note to self if you've got munoz because i told you to play him uh, go through and change your lineups. I'm sure you'll get it also notified if you have notifications turned on through DraftKings. Okay, so we are looking at uh, pretty decent. Over 11,000 lineups have been created. I've actually created, uh, usually I build by hand, and I do, as you guys know, in the big game. This is talking the the GPP large $20, you know, win 250 k tournament. Um, I actually put 50 entries in because I really like this tournament, and... Uh, Got some new money to blow from the Masters. So with that said, um, let's go through this. So number one, highest owned is Morikawa. Not too far, 0.2% behind is Lowry. So I already told you guys Morikawa, I think a, if I'm going to place one in a 10, he be it. I did sprinkle him in in some of my 50,000 or 50, 50, in my 50 lineups. Um, but you can see my core group of guys that I selected are pretty highly owned, um, at least definitely the top six which is Lowry, Henley, Fitzpatrick, Hadwin, Berger, Neiman, Simpson. I'm sorry, not Simpson. I didn't pick him. Uh, Neiman is where I stopped. And I think Hadwin, I already mentioned this, uh, is a great value, hence why his ownership is also very high. Um, you also got a couple of my picks here. Norin and Connors coming in at over 15%. You got the Cooch at over 13 You know, Kirk Streelman that I picked around 12 Billy Ho at 11 there was something that was interesting. Cam Smith, uh, don't forget, I was watching, you know, I always do this. I go back, watch some coverage of the tournament. I think it was day two here last year. He shot a 62, which is just one off the course record, which I mentioned was uh, Troy Merritt back in 2015. So I've just been kind of waiting for Cam to withdraw, to be honest. Um, if he does not withdraw, I might be sprinkling him in. I've, I literally have him in no lineups right now out of those 50 that I mentioned. Um, but I might go th with seeing this ownership. I might make some changes. And, um, you know, there's no reason. He's playing great golf. Um, you know, I think a bit of the narrative why some of us are like, you know, you just came off a very, you know, grueling, emotional, you know, masters. Um, and so I think that's a bit why some of us, uh, at least me specifically, I don't want to speak for other people, why I'm not super excited about playing cam you know he's like one of my favorite players to play he's in my top five so anyways just note to self on that all right moving through the rest of these guys uh mr kevin nas coming in just under 10 percent um i'm looking for anything that's a little interesting so my sebastian munoz as i just mentioned has withdrawn he was coming at eight percent so i wasn't the only one i guess that was seeing what i was seeing so that's kind of a bummer i might pivot to seb straka more uh, I just showed you guys a bit of the information on him. So that would probably be where I'm going to be putting some shares. Um, you got my Nate Lashley and Brian Stewart kind of highly owned for the 6,700 range. But again, you know, people are also seeing some of the things that I'm seeing. Um, Patty Kazire, he almost made my top 15. So that also was where I'm going to put some shares. Let's go talk about Patty. Since you lost Munoz from me, let's go talk about my other broke back guy that I just can't get off. So here's the issue, uh, the driving accuracy. But he can hit it out there a little bit. But Bermuda's best putting surface gains almost a half stroke against the field when he's on Bermuda. So that's definitely a plus. You can see the irons have been firing over the last 10 tournaments. 
And uh, his best iron showing was at the Amex. You can see the Sony, the Amex is where he's had some really good showings. I mean, his one win, I'm sorry, his second win or his first win. Nope, second win was at the Sony and also went at Mayakoba. Sony, a while ago, great. But of course, you know, I think I was also all over him this year for the Sony and did not do that well. But you see the Schwab, the Colonial, you've got uh, the Travelers, the Sony, Sh- Sanderson Farms. I see some crossover there with how tight that course is, also Bermuda. So long story short, I'll also be picking some Patty Kazire now, that that information. So I'll give you that while you're here. Lucas Glover, I don't think it's a bad play either. Honestly, I kind of talked about this yesterday that I think him and Munoz are very similar. They both typically hit a draw. They're very good ball strikers, typically. Their putters can be horrific, but they can also get liquid super hot. So, and Lucas Glover, you know, recently won the John Deere um, last year, which I called. So um, I might also sprinkle some of him in. Okay, I'm going to move through this a little faster. I think Kokrak, it's not a bad play. You could uh, convert to him a little. I already picked Merritt. He's at less than 5%, so that's good. Got a little differentiation, at least there. Um, Anibal Lahiri, kind of funny. Everybody's kind of, as you see, at least from this, is I think he's a good play. He just kind of didn't make my top 15. But what the guy showed, of course, in recent form at the players, a good comparable course, very accurate, typically off the tee. Irons are eh, and but his putting and chipping is typically pretty decent. So it's kind of interesting that his ownership is not higher. If you want to get really crazy, um, put a lineup together with Aaron Wise and Grio because that should fit them. But of course, you know, they're going to be what I'm getting to is they're very, very minimally owned, but they're they've been in uh, terrible recent form. More on Grio. I would feel a little better about Aaron Wise, but could be a shock the world kind of lineup. Um, you know, those guys do what they can do. Uh, they've just been in terrible form. I think Riley's kind of interesting, right? Good putter shown, at least what we have on him. Not bad off the tee, pretty good putter, just kind of rough around the greens, not really great with the irons. There's my Tringali. I mean, that's going to be probably one of my kind of leverages. Same with the old Blackbeard here. Um, I think for the price, Tringali, even Lanto Griffin, it's so funny that, man, if these two guys fallen out of favor, um, Cam Davis, same thing, you know, but just been playing terrible golf. I mean, that's the way it goes. And uh, there's Jim Furyk, less than 2%. So I was curious where he was going to fall in. And I'm trying to see anybody else. Ricky Fowler, uh, less than 1%. So there you go. You could throw a Ricky Fowler, a Grio, and a Wise, and uh, you would be, and then pick the top three guys. Phil Jagas actually does okay at this tournament. Just side note, also typically if he's going to putt well, Bermuda is kind of his surface. He can get a little wayward with the driver, but his irons he can get pretty hot with. Charlie Hoffman, um, what a mess. Uh, there, throw him in that crazy lineup. So you put Hoff, Fowler, Grio, and Wise. Typically, you know, at one time, all, you know, in their height of powers, very good golfers. There's my Zach Johnson coming in at 0.3, so I'm kind of excited about that. I think Streb you could play. Uh, side note, Richard Wierenski, I've got a bet on. Okay, I think that's it. The rest of the guys are all very low owned and, you know, or not own existent. All right, real quick, let's go look at weather and then we'll get this uh, wrapped up for you guys. So uh, wind finder, of course, that's what you're going to want to use. Pull up Crystal Beach. That is the closest that's, this course is located right above Tybee Island. And um, we don't need to look at Wednesday today, but we do want to look at Thursday. I didn't see anything um, from what I've been looking at that's anything of concern. Of course, this is off the Atlantic Ocean, so it could blow, but not as kind of crazy as maybe the Pacific Ocean. Um, you know, maybe again, morning to afternoon, you you know, is there a slight, but again, nothing. And again, this is, you know, it is protected a little bit by the trees. So nothing to worry about uh, that I see in the weather. Let's go look at the weekend forecast too. Again, we're, this is out a few days. Um, Saturday looks like a little more wind could pop up and sunday but again nothing that i see crazy so just keep an eye on it. and i always just tell you guys i give you this information just more of hey use crystal beach is where you want to pull your information from on WindFinder. okay let's go uh wrap this thing up okay so my top plays be uh seven came below uh leading off of course my my brian stewart as you guys if you've been with me a while of course i typically plug him in these kind of uh events and he's been playing well 
So I like him. I like him to, you know, definitely make the cut. Maybe get us a top 20-ish. Um, that'd be nice. Nate Lashley playing great golf. Uh, you know, always keep an eye on him. Had a good showing at AT&T, Bubble Beach. Also makes you think of the, the small greens. Different putting surfaces, but, um, you know, can get very hot with the irons. And uh, typically, if he's going to putt well, what I've seen is, is been on Bermuda. Cameron Tringali, I mean, you've fallen out of grace. You're at 7K. Um, you have not won on tour yet. You know, all these kind of narratives. I just think for the money and the, the type of golfer that you're getting at that price range, I think he's a value. Um you got Blackbeard again. So just so you guys know, I'll tell you right now, Luke Donald was in this position and I just couldn't do it. Um, I'd rather go with Michael Thompson for me specifically. But, you know, I showed you Luke Donald. He has a great track history here. Been playing pretty decent golf. So you can flip either of those two. Hoping Michael Thompson finally does it for me. Um, you know, like I said, I got a bet on him and uh, just been kind of waiting uh, these spots. And then last but not least, your U.S. Ryder Cup captain. Very low owned. But this is a perfect venue for him to at least, again, get you that sneaky top 20. And I've always stated it's these guys, it's the guys below 7K that is who's going to win the, the big, you know, the tournament. If you pick whoever it is, hopefully it's one of these guys, um, that's going to be the differentiator, right? All right, real quick, one and done. Uh, I did this yesterday, but I always show it again here just so you can see it. I'm going to go through this really fast. Um, here's the guys who gained the most strokes over the last five tournaments at the RBC Heritage. Of course, Webb, Cooch, Poulter, Cantley, Johnson, Fitzpatrick, Berger, Strillman, you can see the rest. The guys that I'm looking at from a one and done, I've stated this in both shows. The first guy I plugged in was Daniel Berger. That is still where it's at. If I had Henley available, I uh, used him at the Sony, which would have been great if he could have won the playoff, should have won that thing. Um, but I think those are my top two. I don't know if I want to spin Morikawa yet, but you could do that. Of course, Corey Connors, I think it's a good play. And then you got the guys to the right. I think Nah Kucher will be you know less. So if you need to make a move, uh, those guys could win this thing. It's, there's definitely a possibility there. And then you got Fitzpatrick down there at the end. Um, you know I don't have any place in my mind that I'm saving him for. You know if the Open at St Andrews was going to be crazy crappy weather, if I knew that, I'd probably save him for that. But anyways, so that's my one and done. Thank you for spending some time with me. Thanks for uh, being a part of. If you are in the community, if you're not, hey, hit that subscribe button. Click that like button and follow me on Twitter. I've been getting quite a few more followers on Twitter, funny enough, uh, which is good. I'm putting out more stuff on there and we'll keep doing that. And of course, keep you guys updated on anything that you need to, to know from the PGA Tour. All right, guys, take care. Have a great, successful, hopefully profitable weekend and uh, enjoy the golf at the RBC Heritage.